Oh, Dr Fish, your mother's here for her six o'clock appointment. Oh, thank you. Mum, Mum, no tipping. How's the car? Oh, I'm not driving that old thing anymore. There's too much road rage around. Makes me nervous. Oh, Mother, road rage is just a media creation. I mean, do you really think someone's going to attack you with a screwdriver? Oh, yes. Only last week, this woman was banging on my car window, screaming. I think I'd run over a cat or something. But really, there's no need to get nasty. Mm. It's Daddy's birthday next week, Bobby. I'd like you to take me to visit his grave. Oh, can't Peter take you? Peter's far too busy. He's a film star. No, he isn't. He's a TV chef. Anyway, Mum, he, he, he deals with death every day. He boils live lobsters. Oh, yes, he does a lovely lobster thermidor. <sighs> Bite down on this, Mummy. <laughs> How does that look? wearing that horrible mask? It's Halloween! I was just getting into the spirit of things. It's a bit scary. Anyway, why, why are you wearing a costume? Are we going to a party? No, it's just for fun. Look, I got a costume for you. Here, put it on. Oh, you look great. Yeah. Surprisingly comfortable. Hello! Ah! <laughs> What's the chocolate for? The treats for the children. Do you think we should be giving out sweets like that? I mean, I am a dentist. It's OK. I I've stuck these little messages on. Chocolate's OK, but brush right away. Trick or treat! Mm, what, what does that mean, trick or treat? I don't know. I know. How about this? Trick. No, 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 it's OK. It, it's OK. Here's some chocolate. Look, chocolate for you. There you go. It's for you. OK. <laughs> Don't cry. Here you go. I'm sorry, what, what did you say your name was? Cynthia. All oh, right, and your husband went to school with me. We played rugby together. I don't remember playing... Oh. Oh, I see. He's dead. Oh, no. Wait a minute. It's Halloween. This is a, this is a joke, right? <laughs> this must be Susan, dead husband. <laughs> what? Oh, really? This, this isn't Susan. Oh, um, well, I'm, I'm, I'm really sorry. Um, what did he die of at such a young age? Who is it? Fell off the roof. Oh, an accident, right? I mean, well, that, I'm really sorry. Well, I suppose I, I could go. I mean, of course I would go, yes. It'll be great to go. Uh, I mean, not, not great. I mean, I mean, I'm just very sorry, yes. OK. Goodbye. What is it? Uh, who's died? Gerald Copstick. What? And that was his wife. He fell off his roof while trying to fix a loose slate. Oh, that's terrible. Who's Gerald Copstick? Well, I don't know, actually. I mean, we went to school together, apparently. His wife said that he was very fond of me, but I don't remember him at all. Gosh, he's dead. And he's the same age as me. That's really depressed me. He fell off a roof. <laughs> you try to save a couple of hundred quid and you end up dead. <laughs> it's a false economy. You're a little old for this, aren't you? Um, it's part of our rebirthing therapy. We're taking our inner children out for Halloween. We had terribly repressed childhoods. If we could just have some sweets, we'll feel a lot better. <laughs> Thanks, Gav. Sit. Oh, the funeral's next week. She wants me to go. Well, your school chums will be there. It could be fun. It won't be fun. I don't want to go. That's not very nice. She's lost her husband. Why are you being so mean? I shouldn't have agreed to go. I should have admitted that I don't know who her husband is. I don't even know what he looks like. Trick or treat! There you are. Don't forget to brush. <laughs> Run 
a chocolate. We have to pretend we're not home. Great. Now we have to sit in the dark in our own house for fear of crazed children in need of a sugar fix. Oh, why are you being so miserable? I don't like all this ghoulish stuff. We have children knocking on the door with axes stuck in their heads. I'm supposed to go to this funeral of someone I don't even know. And my mother wants me to take her to visit Daddy's grave next week. Gives me the creeps. Oh, well, you should visit your father's grave. I, I was watching Oprah Winfrey the other day and she said that grieving's very important. Otherwise, you carry a terrible weight in your heart and you get ill. I just don't want to go to a place where my father's body's become fertiliser, that's all. Goodness, that's over. Well, that's the end of our programming today. We hope you had a good Halloween. We'll be switching off now, but not uh. to worry. This is a completely natural process. You'll feel a tingly sensation all over your body, and then your spirit will separate from you and rise what? above the room. Your lifeless body will remain below, and you will feel an incredibly deep sense of peacefulness. You'll then see what appear to be flashing lights as you ascend through a tunnel to a higher place. All the best, and don't forget to unplug your set. It's a bit late, isn't it? Death has a flexible schedule. Well, we don't have any more chocolates. I have not come for chocolate. Oh, would you like a piece of fruit, then? An apple or a banana? Unwrapped fruit is unsafe. I have not come for any handout. I am here. Who's that couple behind you? Oh, for God's sake, they follow me everywhere. Mother, I'm working. Would you please let me do my job? I brought you a sweater. It's a bit chilly with all this mist. I am not mortal. I need no sweater. Just put it over your shoulders. Don't be such a show-off. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Margaret, what are you doing here? Where am I? Well, this is nice and cosy. <laughs> what? Oh! What is this? Earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. From the earth we have come. Excuse me? Uh, I'm not dead Lord yet. Uh, can, can you please not Lord bury me? <laughs> yeah, I'd like to come out. Margaret! Margaret! Let me out! Let me out! <laughs> Gerald Copstick left us far too early. He had a whole life in front of him, and it was so cruelly snatched away. Ironically, the roof was still under guarantee, and he needed to have been up there risking his life at all. But Gerald was a doer. Well, I hadn't, you know, I hadn't met him myself, but I imagine he, he may well have been a doer. A man who wouldn't wade through a heap of old documents to try to get some dodgy builders back to make good a slip tile. He would climb onto that roof and fix it himself. Um, which, I suppose, was, was not really the best thing to do. But, but there you go. We all feel a terrible loss. What is out there beyond mortality? What does it all mean? These are natural questions to ask. Our Mr Chipstock here is dead. No denying that, nothing will bring him back. Nothing. So how do we cope with this trip into the Great Void? With our abiding faith in our Redeemer, the Lord himself, who will deliver Mr. Chopstick not to eternal nothingness, but to eternal bliss in the heaven beyond. At least I assume heaven. I didn't know the man, so I can only guess based on what his wife has told me. <laughs> Lord, we have a terrible loss. Uh, Stop looking so miserable. Well, I didn't want to come here, did I? Do people really believe all this piffle about going to heaven? Oh, oh come on, Margaret. This stuff is all nonsense for people who refuse to accept the true misery of eternal non-existence. Stop it. We're in a chapel. We don't know who's listening. But then again, if I was naive enough to believe all this rubbish, I'd probably be a happier person. Well, could you try? 
All rise. <laughs> we all feel a terrible loss, so how do we cope with this trip into the Great Void? There must be people here you haven't seen in years. Yeah, just try not to look. <laughs> what, right? Oh, no, there's Richard Collins. He was such an idiot. Which one is he? That one over there with the weasley eyes. Hmm. Oh, my God, he spotted me. Oh, no, he's coming over here now. I don't want to talk to him. I hate him. <laughs> oh, fish face. I can't believe it. How the bloody hell are you? Oh, well, uh, pretty good, thanks. How the uh, bloody hell uh, uh, are you? Just great. Really great. So, did you become that top brain surgeon you always wanted to be? Well, I I I'm a dentist. Oh, I see. Well, uh, I, bet I bet you've got some swanky big surgery somewhere posh, am I right? Uh, yeah, yeah, that's right. <clears throat> um, what are you doing now? Oh, I'm a consultant psychiatrist. Oh, <laughs> really? Old fish face. <laughs> Say, Fishy, do you remember this cop stick fellow? I don't remember him at all. Well, no, actually. Oh, my God, look, there's Barbara Charlesworth. She's got really fat. See you later, fish face. Babsy Charlesworth, how the bloody hell are you? No, 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 wait, wait, wait. Uh, don't tell me. You are. Oh. Gosh, I know who you are. It's on the tip of my tongue. Ah, don't tell me. Don't tell Bob me. Bob Fish. Bob Fish, of course. Of course, the great brain surgeon. Edward Thistlewaite. You know, Eddie? Oh, yeah, Eddie Thistlewaite. You were top of the class, weren't you? What, what are you now, a, a nuclear physicist or something? Assistant Quality Control Supervisor, British Biscuit Consortium. Nothing gets by Eddie the Eagle Eye. If you ever get a cracked custard cream, it's down to the stock boys at the supermarket, not me. Ah, uh, gosh. Oh, wow, chicken tikka bites. Mm. He had such potential. <laughs> it's on the tip of my tongue. Oh, gosh. Well, uh, thanks for a really nice... Uh... <laughs> I mean, we're, we're, we're very sorry. The catering was, was really first class, yes. Uh, I'm absolutely stuffed. <laughs> uh... Well, um, uh, bye, bye, then. <laughs> well, that wasn't too bad in the end, really. It certainly helps having no emotional attachment to the deceased. I find it kind of depressing. I mean, hardly anyone remembered this poor Gerald... C whatever his name was. <laughs> mm, look at that poor man. He looks really upset. That's normal around here. Come on. No, let, let's just make sure he's OK. Uh, <laughs> Excuse me, are you all right? Uh, oh, yes, yes, I'm, I'm, I'm OK. It's just, I find this all so sad. So very, very sad. Were, were you and Gerald close? <laughs> He's very upset. Yeah, it, it's tragic, isn't it? So, at such a young age. Yes, just snatched away from us like that. And the roof was still under guarantee? Of course, the roof was still under guarantee, but you see, with your health, there are no guarantees. No, no, apparently he was in great shape. He, he just fell off his roof. Of course, I just make the point about life being full of so many surprises. And, you know, so many of us are just so unprepared. I don't know. Our life just feels so fragile, so delicate. We all just hang by a thread. <laughs> uh, by the way, you wouldn't happen to be heading towards the Wandsworth area, would you? You know, life is such a precious thing, yet we all have to go sometime. It's easy to think it won't happen, but it will. Fixing your roof or putting your fork in the toaster, it doesn't matter. You think everything's fine, then one day, BOOM! You're dead, just like that. Do you have adequate life assurance? Do you have any kind of burial insurance? I mean, do you know how much a funeral costs, you know, with all the flowers and the catering and a nice hardwood well, casket? We've got plenty of time to sort that out. Well, well, that's what our friend Mr Chapstick thought, wasn't it? Oh, I'll sort out that insurance later. You'd be surprised at just how little comprehensive private medical health insurance can cost per week. It's really something I'd strongly recommend. Hello, Penny. Is my ten o'clock here yet? Yes, he's waiting in the surgery. Huh. I've just uh, put together a few illustrations I thought might be of interest to you. And uh, as I haven't had my teeth cleaned in about five years... Insurance for the dogs? Oh, yes. This policy covers everything from worm pills to open-heart surgery. 
Really? Oh, yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah well, thanks very much. Uh, I'll give you a call on Monday to see how you're getting on. Yeah, yeah. Uh, sorry I didn't have time to look at your teeth. <laughs> Never mind. I'll eat an apple. <laughs> Clinic. Margaret, I've just been talking with Stan. Stan, the insurance man. Now, did you know neither of us has any disability insurance or loss of work benefit scheme? Uh, uh, our present insurance only pays out if we actually die. And it doesn't cover suicide either. I, I really don't think... He has all these statistics on his computer. He says that if you smoke and drink too much in Surrey, you'll still live longer than a vegetarian non-smoker living in Gypsy Hill, because you're more likely to be run over while riding your bicycle. Oh. Listen to this, right? He's got this policy that pays out £200 if I lose a finger. Although it's only £55 for a pinky, but a whopping great £2,500 for the whole hand. Well, that's very nice. Yeah, yeah, it's great. And don't you worry about funerals. Oh, no, this policy provides not only catering and music, but a two-week all-inclusive holiday in the Caribbean for the widow or widower. Well, Bob, I'm not sure that I would want to. No, 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 you don't understand. Life is for the living, Margaret. If something happens to me, there's nothing I would want more than to know that you have two weeks of big cocktails and all the jerk pork you can stuff down your gullet. That sounds lovely. Honestly, Margaret, I feel like the clouds have parted. Everyone has to go sometime, and you just have to accept it and ensure you have a good, comprehensive whole life policy. I, I really think we should think this over. Oh, anymore. my God, it's almost 12.30. I have to pick up my mother. Bye. You know, Mummy... Could you open the windows, dear? Those dogs are really smelly. Oh, of course. Yes, yes. Would you like a mint, Mummy? Oh, thank you, Bobby. You know, Mummy, I do miss Daddy. I know he could be a bit of a poo at times, but he always had a reason. Not anything we understood, but it, but it always made sense to him. He always had a bone to pick with somebody. And remember how he grew those really tall evergreens to block the sunlight from the other people's garden. Bless him. But I do miss him, and I wish he was here just, just to say, Robert, I'm proud of you. You're a good boy. Gosh, look, look at the old high street. Look over there, that, that's new. That used to be a cake shop. Uh, there's Brookfield Road. Oh, gosh, it looks exactly the same. Isn't the cemetery along here? I, I can't remember. Oh, yes, it's just left there by your old school. Turn down here, Bobby. Yes, it's just over this little hill, right? Here? Attention, I can't believe it. I love that little church. Let me see. The church was over there, and we were stood about here. Oh, no, I'm being silly. That was Uncle Jack's funeral. No, Elizabeth, not there. Now, that could be sacred ground. No. I think he was buried around that area there. I remember it being closer to the wall. I don't think so, Bobby. Have you lost something, darling? Oh, uh, my father, actually. We think he's buried under this concrete, but we can't agree where. Oh, no, no, I never saw nothing, mate. Sorry. It was the cemetery that used to be here, wasn't it? Oh, the cemetery. Gotcha. Yeah, uh, well, we got the gravestones all lined up against the wall over there, near the recycling bin. Take what you need. Cheers. You're welcome. What a nice man. William, stop that. You... Oh. Oh, it, it's hopeless. Here we are, Bobby. Here's Daddy. It's just a block of stone. Don't be ridiculous. It's pink pearl granite. Palatino light. He loved that typeface. Happy birthday, Cecil. God bless. Happy birthday, Dad, wherever you are. I hope I'm right and you're not up there looking down on me because, well... I have a lot of nasty habits I'd rather you didn't know about. But if you are, well, sorry about breaking your camera, and sorry that I'm not a brain surgeon, and that I didn't eat my greens. I'm 
trying to be a better person now. Good luck with the whole reincarnation thing, if I'm wrong about that, too. Come on, Bobby. Let's nip to the pastry department and get a nice Eccles cake to have with a cup of tea. Mummy, I have a question that's been bothering me. Why do you ask my brother Peter to take you to the opera and you ask me to take you to a graveyard? Hmm? Why is he so precious? You were Daddy's favourite. What? Really, is that true? You're not my favourite. Peter's my favourite. He's a film star. Oh. <laughs>